Good morning. We've got a full house today. We are actually in a house, so our house is full. Um, welcome to God Manifest. Thank you, first timers. It's great to have you all, all the way from Turkey. They are actually. Uh, partners of BL and Bethel Leadership Network, so are Olivia and I, and uh, they reached out and they said they were in Houston today, so we invited them to come. So please welcome them. Y'all are pastors and missionaries in, in, um, in Turkey, right? Awesome. Yeah, pretty amazing. They have four children. Two of them are in Bethel right now in their school of supernatural ministry. Really, really awesome. Um, sign for offerings. Thank you, everyone who, who supports us. Um, everyone who's online, um, there's been a there's been an influx of support this week, and uh, we really do appreciate every single penny that comes through. It gives us a chance to really uh, sow into ministries around the world, and also sow into the speakers that come through our church. So, uh, thank you for partnering with us and everything God is doing through God Manifest. I'm just going to jump right in. It's going to be a shorter sermon today. It's going to be a little different as well. You know, y'all know Friday was Valentine's Day, so this message is titled "A Man Named Love." 1 Corinthians 13, 13, I'm reading from the Passion Translation. It reads, until then, there are three things that remain, faith, hope, and love. Yet love surpasses them all. So above all else, let love be the beautiful prize for which you run. It's interesting when you think of those three words, faith, hope, and love. A lot of us, when we think of those words, we, we know they're verbs, right? Faith, hope, and love are verbs. But they're also nouns in this system. It's an instance. They're, uh, as a verb, they're of all risky actions that we take. It's a lot of times at great cost. We may, we may act in faith or act in hope or react or act in love with little chance of repayment a lot of times when we, when we act in, as an action, as a verb. But also, this, these things are nouns as well. And as a noun, they're God called them spiritual nouns. There are things in which we can possess, things in which we can share, we can impart, we can, we can give to one another. Um, and there are things that can multiply, like seeds that are planted. Faith can multiply within us. We can walk into a room, share faith, and it, it can multiply and be imparted into each and every person. Um, how many here has dated when you were younger? Do you remember the first time you told the person you were dating that you loved them? It was risky, wasn't it? I remember saying that. I remember sitting there going, gosh, I think I love this person. And, and I had to look at that person, and, and she said it first. She said, I love you. I was like 14 years old. I was in shock because I wanted to say the same thing. I didn't say it quickly enough. She looked like she would have panic in her eyes, and I, and I, and I said it back. Right? I said, I love you. It's a relief when you get it reciprocated. reciprocated. However, a lot of times, how many of us have shown love and not seen it come back? Yeah. Or shown love to people knowing there is no form of repayment when you're out, let's say, ministering out in Turkey or ministering out to the homeless or the prostitutes. I used to minister to a lot of prostitutes um, from the transvestite family of transvestites to to the, uh, to the prostitutes, to people who were, who were victims of human trafficking, there's no way for them to pay me back for the love we showed. <laughs> Willie and I used to go out and feed the homeless. There was no way for them to pay us back. And it's interesting, when you're out doing these things, you're, you're, you're giving a gift of love. And a lot of times you encounter people that don't know how to receive it. I'm guilty of that. I didn't know I wasn't very good at receiving love until I married my wife and realized I'm not very good at receiving. It was interesting. So my birthday is on Valentine's Day, right? So on Friday, my boss comes to me and says, what do you and your sweetheart have planned for Valentine's Day? And I said, you know what? Not that I dated a lot, but of all the girlfriends I said I've dated in the past to now, Olivia was the first and only to say, to tell me, hey, on Valentine's Day, it's about you, not me. Let's not celebrate Valentine's Day. Let's celebrate your birthday. Yeah. And that was the first instance in my life where I saw on my birthday that it mattered to someone else. Because yeah. prior to that, all the other women I dated, or girls when I was younger, I dated were very, they thought it was very sweet that I was born on Valentine's Day. 
And then the next question was, are we going to celebrate me on Valentine's Day? Like them. And then my answer was always yes. So I had a small celebration for myself and a big celebration for Valentine's Day for them. It was interesting. So let's talk about the nouns of faith, hope, and love. Example, have you seen a leader who's just moved in so much assured faith? They walk in a room or you're in a situation where faith is needed and they move with so much assured faith that it transcends your disbelief. Y'all ever been there? Right? Like you and I, we love Bethel. The story is that Chris and Danny and uh, Bill Johnson share of, the, of their earlier years of how they moved in faith. It strengthened and transcended my disbelief. I remember hearing some of those stories and thinking, if it happened for them, it could surely happen for me. Right? We've had those leaders. Or a leader who had so much hope that we suddenly forgot our fears. We've been in situations, like Olivia and I, we take turns having fear, right, with different situations. It could be financial, it could be our, our, uh, Hurricane Harvey coming through. These things happen in our life where one or the other or both may rise up in fear. But when one person rises up with hope, it's suddenly that you forget your fear. You think, yes, she's right, or she thinks, yes, he's right. That hope is a gift from God that we can give one to one another by standing up in, in that physical, tangible hope, right? Do you all believe that faith and hope are tangible things? Love is tangible, right? But faith and hope are also very tangible things, things, gifts that we can give one another. And I talked about how encountering, gosh, there's a, a woman, uh, Willie and I know really well, Olivia knows as well, named Jennifer. She got us started in this homeless outreach. First time she asked me to go out there, I thought, all right, I'll go out there. And the love that she showed yeah. these people, I've never seen before, right? Um, and then I, I watched this movie years ago called Finger of God, and I, and I encountered a woman named Heidi Baker. Mm -hmm. She loved on these people in the slums in a way that I've never seen before. It was bold, it was courageous, it was risky. It awakens and imparts and activates things inside of us. That, that tangible love. Y'all ever meet anyone like that? When you meet them, you went, dang, this person walks in the tangible love of Christ. And it oozes and it drips off of them wherever they go. I, when I encounter them, I feel the love of Christ. Mm -hmm. I'm telling y'all, we carry that. We carry all three. We carry it as an action, but when we... When we leave that person after we have a, that verb is activated, we leave them with a noun. They walk away with more faith, more hope, Amen. and more love. We impart that, that, those gifts as tangible presence, as a tangible gift in their hands. Amen. So in 2003, I was saved. I just shared a little bit about my book with them. Y'all know that. I was saved in 2003. I did not realize... I did not understand or know love until I met a man named Jesus Christ. A man who is love. I never encountered love up to that point. I thought I did. I thought I'd given love. I thought I knew love. And I realized I had a lot to learn from this man and his life. That day that love found me, love, the man, the tangible presence, the now, yes. Jesus Christ found me. I was broken, hopeless, fear, faithless, and suicidal. At that time, my life was living from one great experience to the next. I, I was living on the one high to the next high. Y'all ever do that? Going up and down again. What else can I do to get myself back up? I was living from upper to upper. Name it, I was doing it. I was upper to upper. And, I, and then on days I was down and out, I was looking for a way to escape. Y'all ever escape? You ever get secluded internally or secluded, locked up in your bedroom? Because I have roommates, so I just locked myself in the bedroom, turned off all the light, and, and binge watched stuff on Netflix. A day or two later, my friends would knock on the door and go, hey, I haven't seen you in two days. Now I didn't move to talk to anybody, right? You ever do that? I have. When I was saved, I had these physical wounds. Well, when I was saved, the physical wounds from my childhood, 
with just scars. But man, those scars gave me physical pain. Those emotional pains in my life were consuming me alive before Christ. At that point, I didn't even realize I didn't have an identity before Christ began to show me my identity. Y'all been there? Where sometimes you just forget who you are when, and they're in the hardest circumstances of your life. You think, I can't do this. And there's two promises instantly. Hey, I'm with you. Christ says, I'm with you. I've got your back. And then the second promise is, do you know who you are? You're my bride. You're my friend. You're my brother. All these identities begin to rush in, and all those identities begin to rush in. You begin to have hope, faith, and love fill you and give you purpose again. At that time, I never knew those things. I never knew my identity. By that point, I was, I was, uh, my identity was, was shifted. Each time it shifted. I talked to someone recently, and he said, hey, I, sometimes when I'm out and about, I don't know which, ident which, uh, which personality to show. And I thought, all right. I need to probably sit and talk to you about that, this issue. Uh, but I was doing the same thing, right? I was going from circumstance to circumstance, group to group, day to day. I didn't know what personality was going to arise. I didn't know what personalities were going to come out. It was, uh, for some, I was, you know, I'm a marketing director, and I'm a, I, I went to school for graphic designing. So to some, I was a creative artist. So when they spoke to me, I was a creative artist that spoke like an artist. To others, I was an unforgiving, tough, unforgiving general. I talked martial arts when I got saved. And man, when someone did me wrong in that, in that group, I was no longer a loving teacher. I was a ruthless, unforgiving general. And to others, I was a, a, a friend to party with. Hey, I was down for to try anything, anywhere, with anyone, I was ready to go. Because I was living from instance to instance, upper to upper, looking for myself. I couldn't find myself because my, I, then I, when I, you know where I found myself? In Christ. Amen. The moment I found Christ is the moment I realized where I've been hidden, hiding all my life. I was lost and I did not know it. At that time when I was saved, my, my, my childhood haunted me and the actions of my adolescence condemned me and my hopelessness as an adult numbed me. Mm -hmm. Y'all ever been haunted Condemned and numbed are your past. Yeah. I've been there. Last year, I spoke to a friend of mine, and it's Dr. Lance. He's a trauma therapist. And he said it to myself. He said, Jonathan, do you realize you've just been surviving? And that, that, last year, I was 40. So for the last 40 years, I'm like surviving. He goes, you're very high functioning, though, but you're barely surviving. Do you know what your potential is? And I said, no, can you tell me? What is my potential? So I don't know. I didn't even know I was drowning before someone said, hey, are you, are you tired of not breathing? You know, I was drowning in my sorrows and didn't know it. Then with no more tears to cry, before I could numb my pain, in my torment permanently forever, I met love. The mere idea of a man who I never knew, who left heaven, lived, was punished, was sacrificed, killed, went to hell for me, yeah. blew my mind. Yeah. I was thinking to myself, I remember when our first, they said, do you know Jesus? I said, look, I, I watched them on TV once. I watch, you know, on Thanksgiving and then on Christmas, they always had this, this Jesus thing published by really a non-Christian group. And my mom would watch it, would cry, and then never understood it in English. And I, that's the only Jesus I knew. And then I had friends who were Southern Baptists who Bible beat me when I was a Buddhist. When I was into, we have kids in a room, into bad adult stuff. Um, my friends would Bible beat me and then join me in those bad adult stuff. And then, and, then by, and then Bible beat themselves and tell me that they're going to hell, I'm going to hell, everyone's going to hell. And I'm thinking to myself, if, 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 God, if this God you're telling me to, to receive, his, his purpose is to condemn me to hell, why do I want him? And then I met love. That's why I tell people, people always have seen me out ministering in, to the homeless and the prostitutes and these things. They go, you're not preaching the gospel in the house of. Well, you're not trying to get them saved. 
And I said, six of them got saved after a year. But all you do is you're just loving on them. Yeah. And I was like, it's my job to love, man. Yeah. Because yeah. I was yeah. first loved. How can I tell someone that they're going to hell without loving them? I'd rather tell them where they're, where they're going with Christ than where they're going without them. Amen. What, what if we change our mindset? Oh, that's, that's it. Hey, yeah. I want you, God wants you in heaven with him. If they say, hey, where am I going if I don't have them? It's not, not in heaven. We have, a cry, we have a God who died for you. A brother who sacrificed. A king who set down his crown. Yeah. What if we shifted our mindset? Then I learned the day I was saved, this man named Love knew me by name. He knows you by name. And he knew you by name before you were formed in your mother's womb. The more I read as a, as a brand new converted Buddhist, the more shock I was and the, and, the, and the more I cried out my pain. And the more, the, the more pain that went out, the more identity entered. Amen. Suddenly I moved from barely surviving to completely thriving. That's a goal, right? We have people who, who got saved and received Christ in this way in our church who are thriving. And it's amazing when you see those the, the people who are thriving. If we, I can go around the room. Everyone who's, who's, who, who, who can give a quick testimony, they can probably say, I didn't know I was drowning. I didn't know I was suffocating. I didn't know I was numb. I did not know I was broken until I was better. I went to, I broke my right ankle four times playing basketball. I was, at one point I was skinnier and I could jump. I broke my ankle, right? Uh, four times playing basketball. Well, I went to this group called Rossi Therapy. It's a, a chiropractor group. And I was in so much pain. And she said, hey, I can help. And I was thinking to myself, I've seen chiropractors. I've seen masseuse. I've seen, seen rehab people. I've rehabbed myself. I've tried everything. I'm in pain. That's just the norm, I thought. <clears throat> Two treatments later, I was walking without a limp, pain-free, and I was shocked. And I thought to myself, I never knew I could feel this good. And I also never knew I felt that bad. Some of us are coping, or some people we know or we come across are coping with so much pain and brokenness that we don't even realize it. Here's some cool things. The love of God is someone whom we can possess. Possession means living in something, right? We live in Christ. We possess Christ. And then the same love can possess us. As we are in him, he's in us. It blew my mind. Here I am as a Buddhist, right? The only possession I knew were demonic possessions because I was in, I was in, we were out eating just, just last night and my mom was with me and she goes, remember that witch doctor we used to go, we used to, go to for like three years every twice a week? And I said, yeah, she goes, he's right there. She goes, don't make eye contact. <laughs> and she did. She goes, don't make eye contact. I'm gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna exit this way in the void out. <laughs> well, what's cool is, right, at that time, Christ wasn't in me yet, but he was, he was with me. Yeah. Yeah. I, was telling, I was sharing at the table where I was there with Scott Windrum, a few other ministers, a, a friend of ours, and I said to them, I said, what was interesting was, yes, I was a Buddhist then, but that guy was so determined to steal something that was given to me. Mm -hmm. And in those instances, I remember thinking, I would close my eyes and say, just turn it all off on him. And it would. He would look at my mom and go, I'm not sure what happened. He'd look at his, his, his witch doctor following and say, I'm not sure what happened, but I can't see or hear anything right now. This is the first time I really, first or second time I encountered this guy. And my mom goes, I know what happened. My son turned you off. And she looks at me. I'm 10 years old. <laughs> she goes, Jonathan? I said, he's creepy. She goes, Stop blocking that stuff. I'm like, I don't think he's supposed to be messing with those demons. And she goes, they're not demons. They're Buddhist gods. I'm like, I'm pretty sure they're demons. You know? I've seen angels all my life. I've seen demons. I'm like, I'm pretty sure they're demons. Yeah. So in this instance, when you're, so this possession now, suddenly, we're possessed with the Holy Spirit, which is God. And, we're, and, and then God is possessing us. 
That's mind-blowing. I don't think a lot of Christians who are born in church can grasp how, how miraculous that is. God of the world, creator of heaven and earth, that created man and created woman and created everything we can, we can see is in us. And even more mind-blowing, we're in him. I'm like, how is he in two places at once? Because he's omnipresent. I remember the first time I heard that word, omnipresent. I looked at it, I heard it, I leaned over to my friend DJ and I said, Omni what? He said, present. What does that mean? He goes, God is everywhere. I'm like, he's everywhere? <laughs> and he said, yeah, and I'm like, hold on. And I, and I read the scripture and I'm like, so he, so he, so this makes sense now. He can be in us and, and we can be in him at the same time. And he goes, yeah, and I'm like, get it. I receive it. I can live it. I believe it, right? I remember when I asked God, I said, where were you all my life? Have y'all done that during a hard situation? Where were you during this freaking situation, God? Where were you? I was 23 when I got saved. So I was like, where were you when mom, my mom killed me at 12? Where were you when I was in that fire? Where were you when I was in these? I started naming every painful memory. And God says, you want to know. And he flooded my mind with every instance that I questioned and more. And he showed me where he was. When I was getting beaten, he showed me he laid on top of me. I remember during the time I was getting beaten with a with the, uh, bamboo cane. I was eight years old, naked, laying down. My skin was being split. It was just, I was in so much pain, and all of a sudden, there was no more pain. You know why? Jesus laid down and took the strikes. Oh, God. Just like he did at the cross, to before the cross. When I learned about that, I went, okay, that, that's exactly what he showed me he did for me. But he laid across me. He took my pain. He took, he took my stripes. When, he, when, he, when I heard about stripes, I said, what are, what are those? And my friend DJ looked it up and showed me a picture of you know, some of the old videos and movies. And I saw those lines. I said, I used to have those all my, down my body. And he said, from what? And I said, my mom. And I said, they do look like stripe, they're stripes. And I said, that's interesting. It looks like tiger stripes, right? And then he showed me every instance. He pulled me out of the fire. He did all these things. He showed me, hey, even though you weren't in me yet and I wasn't in you yet, I was wow. still with you. Amen. Awesome. Amen. I still loved you. that he was always there. And it's even more amazing that he forever lives in you and me. I'm going to read 1 John 4, 7 through 10 from the Passion. Those who are loved by God, let his love continually pour from you to one another because God is love. Everyone who loves is fathered by God. This means is not in the scripture right now. This means that as a child, we carry the likeness of our parent, of our parents. We carry the likeness of our father. They carry y'all's likeness. They carry Joe and Lorena's likeness. It means everyone who is loved by the by, who loves, who loves the father is wait, Everyone who loves is fathered by God, and experiences an intimate knowledge of Him. The one who doesn't love has yet to know God. But God is love. The light of God's love shined within us when he sent his matchless son to the world so that we might live through him. This is love. He loved us long before we loved him. It was his love. Jesus and Jesus was his and his alone to give. It was his love, not ours. It was the love of our Father. Jesus was God, only God's to give. We, we, we couldn't sacrifice Jesus. It was God's alone to give. Not ours. He proved it by sending his Son to be the pleasing sacrificial offering to take away our sins. You are his and he is yours. He chose you. 
Psalms 104, a reading from the NSAB, gives us a secret to receiving our full inheritance. A lot of people always ask, hey, how do you function in, in miracle signs and wonders? How do you function in these spiritual gifts? Psalms 104, it says, Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with mm. praise. Give thanks to him because his, because, uh, uh, give thanks to him, bless his name. You are loved by the one who is loved. You are loved by the one who is loved. I want to do a, an exercise right now as we turn up the music. Let's just close our eyes and think about the things we're thankful for. Chasing you down right now. He has a family crest, the ring in his hand. He's putting it on you right now. He is putting the robes of the rainbow colors of many colors on you right now. You're not forsaken. You're not forsaken. I think a lot of Christians need to be right, reminded there's not a thing you can do to separate yourself from the love of Christ. He was there before salvation. He was there at salvation. And he is with you forever. His promise is he will never leave you or forsake you. I think it's important for us as Christians to walk into truth. We are accepted. We are loved. We are powerful. We have received His mercy, His grace. We have received a full inheritance. This song, I couldn't stop singing it all weekend. Man, He's good. There were countless of times when I could have died, when we could have died, when we could have been injured, or could have made a, we could have made the dumbest decisions of our life that only not only affects our life, but it affects the lives of those we love. Just this week, we heard from a friend that this, they sent our my book to their son in prison who has since passed it around to, to everyone, he can, everyone in prison. They're receiving Christ. Not because of my life, but because of God's goodness. I had a hard time, you know, at, I think receiving love is the hardest thing for me. You can't receive something you don't believe you, 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 uh, you believe, huh? Deserve. Yeah, you, you can't receive something you don't believe you deserve. Yeah. And I think... God's, God's relieving a, releasing a grace for us to, to be able to receive more from Him to whoever He pleases. We can't pick and choose who, how He loves us and who He loves us for. for. Yeah. We have to receive the love. That's it, y'all. Just, we, for the rest, you know, I think if we can focus on God is good, and God will never leave us. I think we're all going to stay in a very good place. God bless y'all.